go. Streaming from South Africa to the world. To the world. This is the Stonks Go Moon podcast. What just happened? We break it down so you don't have to. Welcome everyone to the Stonks Go Moon podcast. My guest today, Annalise Osborne, the new CBO of Kadena. Welcome to the pod. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very excited to be here, Rocco. Your new book. Right, I devoured the first chapter this morning in, I think it was 15 to 20 minutes. It's called From Hoodies to Suits, Innovating Digital Assets for Traditional Finance. Congratulations, first of all. Uh, critically acclaimed, I saw this morning on Amazon, number one in derivatives category. Yeah, I've hit derivatives for, I'm sorry, I've hit number one for derivatives, portfolio yeah. management, and digital currencies. Oh, I'll take oh. what I can get, but I yeah. love it. We just came out two weeks ago and it's been, um, it's been so exciting to have something that people can actually, actually really appreciate. And this is a, this is a passion project really because, um, after FTX, I was talking to a bank who said they wouldn't talk about anything crypto oriented, uh, for the month, for, for, for what, well, they said the month, but, um, until next year is what they said. And to me, I was like, they, this is the differentiation between like Bitcoin and blockchain are not the same thing. And so I, I wanted to write an educational book that was not a textbook that just explained to kind of, you know, finance corporate America, which is also that I'm getting a lot of positive reviews from the techies as well, yes. from some that read it to understand better about finance. So, um, so that's my goal. What, why, why this technology is so amazing. Like the hoodies have built this two point, depending on the day, $2.6 trillion market cap um, of a whole industry. And then to make, to take that further, we need the suits involvement and the suits are already, there's, there's a lot of benefits to the suits. I think DeFi and TradFi will merge. I think it's amazing to look and see what's already been created. I also think the whole world is shifting with the new generations and the wealth transfers and the expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so that's all. That's me quick. Let's <laughs> roll it back a bit and start from the beginning. Um, you you mentioned hoodies and suits. So I put a hoodie on today. I've been wearing my hoodie the whole day in preparation for this interview. Love because it. Because I see myself as an outsider to TradFi or traditional finance. Because like I shared with you, if you didn't go to X institution or X school or work at X company, you're always an outsider in traditional finance. Yes, sure, they might be in the hoodies as well, but it's far, far less. So, and then we get the suits, right? The Wall Street, uh, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, we all know them. So these are the two characters, right, in your book. And if I'm right, you're trying to demystify blockchain and crypto in a larger context to the suits is that a fair that assessment that is absolutely so i i admit that i wrote the book for bob the yeah. the finance guy and yeah so i yeah. wanted i wanted bob to understand who doesn't understand crypto to understand why this technology is so amazing and why it's changing and upgrading capital markets not to, i'm not saying finance is broken i'm saying this makes mm. it more efficient mm. just mm. like emails versus faxes or so no one knows the term paperwork right we don't we yes. don't have paper anymore so or uh what is it pay phones you know that's i feel like the world has the world is shifting and this is part of that shift and this this technology is making a lot of things happening in finance that will be more efficient but what what was interesting to me when when i started the, picking up the first chapter it's like i didn't recognize or realize that bob knew so little about blockchain. I mean, it's 2024. This thing has been around since the 80s. Where, what has Bob been doing all this time? I mean, there's only so many strip clubs you can go to. At the moment I said that is like, but <laughs> but it's like not to paint a picture of Wall Street as that's the only thing they do, but that's a big part of it. But like, what, what's Bob been up to since the 1980s? 
So I think a lot of like, there's a lot of money being made in finance, right? And yeah. in different pockets of finance and every finance is such a broad term. There's so many different factions of it. Mm. And if they're, if the market's adjusting and moving along fine and Bob gets paid from his bonus, right? If he does well. And so why have to change it? Yeah. Right. Why do I want to? And if I have to learn something new and a lot of people are uncomfortable with change, mm -hmm. right? I have a chapter I have in the book on that too. Like monkeys are much better at changing than humans okay. or accepting change. Yeah. Um, then why can't I just keep it how it is today? Yeah. So basically, if, if I go, if we keep with Bob, right? Let's stick with Bob. <laughs> it's not Bob that wants to change. It's Bob's customers that yeah. are going to force him to change. Is that right? They're, well, Bob's customers and Bob's competition, okay. right? Okay. Because there's two ways. Anytime you're looking at business, and this is corporate America too, there's benefits for, you're yeah. looking at increasing revenue or decreasing costs. And this okay. technology can do both depending on what you're focused on, right? Okay. So if you're looking on it, I think the customers demanding change could actually go under both of those categories, right? So they yeah. you can increase like assets under management, which is why BlackRock and Franklin Templeton and KKR and Hamilton Lane are all tokenizing funds mm -hmm. because it makes it much more efficient. It decreases their cost, allows them to onboard more people more efficiently. And mm -hmm. we're going to increase assets under management. They're going to want to start getting retail investors in. Okay. And this technology allows them to do that, to mm -hmm. understand cost savings, JP Morgan has an internal stable coin that they're using for manage collateral management that allows their clients faster, faster settlement, but it also saves them money, right? They say last year, they, they report to have saved $20 million on, on really testing out repo transactions, right? That was majority of what they did. And that's when they were doing only about a billion dollars a day. Now they're using it from what they have announced on panels is up to high single digits of billions. And so I feel like that is just the tip of the iceberg, that 20 million. Mm -hmm. Also, you have a figure who's doing loans that are saving 150 basis points, so 1.5%, which is a lot when you're dealing with the amount of money you're dealing with when you're dealing with fixed income markets. And so that's on the cost saving side. So you will be less competitive. So Bob will be less competitive if if you're not taking on this technology within the company because you're not you're you're competing against people that have lower expense ratios yeah and then also it's hard to grow your assets under management because you're not using this technology to allow more retail people to invest in your funds for example if that makes sense those yeah, two examples. no 100% very good um i don't want to give to divulge too much um, information <laughs> while from the first chapter but i'm not the book but um there's a point um, where you said before you were started working at a, a, a traditional finance company and they wanted you to explore the crypto space. And you said to them, I don't know anything about this space. That's right. I, I might it was, well, it was a little different. I was on, I left a traditional, I'd had a traditional finance background and then yes. I was doing a lot of board work. And so the board wanted me to join to help regulating ICOs. Okay. And it was not where my experience lays. Okay. Well, okay. close enough. I'm going to take okay. that as, a, I'm going to take that as, as, However. A, as, as, okay. But what was interesting to me is you said how you basically started to pick it up is by watching YouTube videos. A hundred percent true. Back in 2017 and 18. Yep. And the, to Plus me, you that is so, it, it's just like. YouTube is this amazing treasure trove of knowledge that if you know where to look, you can basically pick up anything and here you are today. It's okay. That's your start. It's not the everything, but still, I mean, to me, for you to highlight it in the book, I guess, made a huge impact on me. So what's also interesting as you get further along is I mm. think the next generations are, to your point, your clients, you have to move with your clients with the money is going to millennials and Gen Z and they're starting to kind of run the companies and departments. Yeah. Um, so there was a study done in the UK that 85% of Gen Z get their financial information from Finfluencers. Mm. The social media has changed dramatically. Look at what happened with GameStop, right? GameStop, mm -hmm. I feel like that was all social media oriented and the next generation oriented. So I feel, yes, I did. I got my education off of YouTube and it wasn't even very financially oriented. It was really just 
what the basis of this blockchain did and how, and then for me, it was kind of like, wow, this is great for finance, but absolutely that, that those were my, instead of, yes, I just wrote a book, but I did, mm. I wasn't researching in books at that time, what was happening. Cause there's not a lot of, there's not a lot out there. That's one reason I wrote the book. How, where did you learn to write um, in such an easy to understand format? Because I, like I said, I, I just like, it pages went like this. So that was the goal. I've read, mm. I've read all the books out there kind of that were, the, the other books are crypto, DeFi, digital, uh, digital dollar. You know, they're not as focused. This was really how capital markets is affected. And I wanted it to be an easy read with stories that were relatable. Uh, and so that was, that was my whole goal. And that's kind of you to say, thank you. Um, <laughs> but I am not a writer. I'm a math person. I love like math and numbers. And so this was just... Um, I did, I did find an editor that helped me tie stories in. Mm -hmm. um, so that was helpful. So every, every chapter starts with stories that people can relate to. Okay. So the, so the overarching theme of the first chapter is massively in capital letters, blockchain is not Bitcoin, right? And I've heard the opposite as well. I've heard the people saying Bitcoin is not blockchain. So now you're saying, okay, cool, blockchain is not Bitcoin. Let's go down that road a bit. Um, you see blockchain as being sort of the the catalyst for this movement. Uh, so if, if, the, if you go back to the Bitcoin white paper, right? If yes. you think about how, and that's kind of how I look at started. I know that there were blockchains before, but this has kind of really shed light on it. Look mm. at, it was in 2008 when you had to occupy Wall Street, you had a huge financial crisis and people were trying to take control back. Yeah. So it's a little bit um, contradictory that mm. if, if you look at the technology on which Bitcoin was created, it's a great tool for traditional finance. But one, you're cutting out intermediaries and traditional mm -hmm. finance can also work on cutting intermediaries out and increase trust, which also Bitcoin increases trust. Um, but yeah, so I'm really focused on <clears throat> this technology and what it can necessarily do. And Bitcoin is a, and cryptocurrency is a use case is how I put it for this technology. Because I think there's a lot of other uses that this technology okay. can accomplish. Final question before I let you leave, short and sweet. Okay. Uh, one from the community was, if you could remove one of the obstacles or the biggest obstacle in 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 your opinion from the suit between the suits um, and the hoodies, what would it be? Uh, I would think it has to do with interoperability. I would think. You know, I would, one of the problems with the banks is that, and all the financial systems that you have tech, old, really old tech, and then newer tech built on top of it. Yeah. I would like to remove all of that out and just have fresh tech, which is probably not the coolest answer, but I feel like, in, think about gaming, right? Are yeah. You, you're familiar with yeah. gaming. Like, yeah. you can actually build innovation quick more quickly in gaming because it's more interoperable yes. versus the old financial system is so antiquated i would love to kind of start over again with that yeah um so that's the first thing that comes to my head um then the Good other is kind of yeah. the other is regulation right i think okay. we need more regulation but that's boring but do you okay let's play devil's advocate what yeah. is better for regulation of crypto the democrats or the Republicans? Oh, I, you know, <laughs> I was a consensus and I had so many uh, people ask me the question about mm. this is, I think technology is not a political issue, but in the United States, um, we're in the middle of an election. And so it, it seems to be coming that way. Yes. Um, and I think there needs just to be, I think you have MICA through Europe, which has more clear regulation. Mm. Uh, in the United States, it's very gray. You can't work in the gray, but also, there is no other technology that if a bank touches the technology, they have to report it. They don't, mm. this is, so this is, it's interesting. Like, why is this technology like this, you know, technology is, is, you know, a phone, right? Like there's so many, there's so many technologies out there. Why are, why are banks or other regulated mm. institutions required to report their touching a technology? So I feel like there's a little bit um, of silliness behind like overprotection behind it. Um, but yeah. I don't, I mean, I think, yes, people are using it as a ploy, but also I'm not sure people are going to actually, you know, are people going to actually vote 
one mm. way. There are, there will be a few people that will vote one way or another yeah, really for yeah. reasons. But I also feel like there are other, like the, the country as a whole, to your point, does Bob really not understand blockchain, <laughs> right? I think the country as a whole is probably not going to vote um, on this, but it's, I think it's ridiculous. Apologies to Bob who caught strays in this podcast. We love Bob. We love we Bob. Love Bob. <laughs> Annalise, thank you so much for joining me today. If the listeners want to go connect with you and uh, find out more about your book, where can they do that? LinkedIn, which is where I'm. You'll find me more on LinkedIn. So. And we'll put the links and together with the book in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. And to our listeners, peace, love and prosperity. And we'll catch you in the next one. The hoodies, we changing the game. Finance revolution, we breaking the chains. Old and new, yeah, we want in the same. Suits and hoodies, remember the name. Hoodies in the basement, code on the screen. Visionary minds, living the dream. Startups rise, disrupting the norm. Suits take note, a new age is born. Together we thrive, breaking down the walls. Investment bankers, tech wizards on calls. From hedge funds to the latest dApps. Unified front, no room for collapse. Suits and hoodies. Changing the game, finance revolution, we breaking the chains. Old and new, yeah, we one and the same. Suits and hoodies, remember the name. Charts and graphs, algorithms and code. Suits and hoodies, we share the same road. Mergers and markets, IPOs and defy. Together we rise, together we fly. They said it couldn't happen, this blend of two worlds. Suits in the skyline, hoodies and pearls. Collaborate, innovate, change the tide. Finance to the future, we walk inside of my side. No longer divided, united we stand. Hoodies and suits, hand in hand. Power moves, tech grooves, it's all time. Revolution and finance, one of a kind. Suits and hoodies, we changing the game. Finance revolution, we breaking the chains. Old and new, yeah, we one and the same. Suits and hoodies, remember the name. Hoodies in the basement. Code the screen. Visionary minds, whatever the truth. Living the dream, living the dream. Suits and hoodies, we changing the game. Finance revolution, we breaking the chains. Old and new, yeah, we one and the same. Suits and hoodies, remember the name. 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 Charts and graphs, algorithms and code. Suits and hoodies, we share the same road. Mergers and markets, IPOs to defy. Together we rise, together we fly. Yeah. Never we thrive. You never we fly. They said it couldn't happen, this blend of two worlds Suits in the skyline, hoodies and pearls Collaborate, innovate, change the tide Finance to the future, we walk inside by side No longer divided, united we stand Hoodies and suits, hand in hand Power moves, tech grooves, it's our time Revolution and finance, one of a kind Suits and hoodies, we changing the game Finance revolution, we breaking the chains Old and new, yeah, we one and the same Suits and hoodies, remember the name Charts and graphs, algorithms and code Suits and hoodies, share the same road Road, brunches and markets Our peers in the fly Together we hide, together we fly We fly, yeah They said it couldn't happen, this blend of two worlds Suits in the skyline, hoodies and pearls Collaborate, innovate, change the tide Finance to the future, we walk inside by side No longer divided, united we stay Hoodies and suits, hand in hand Power moves, tech grooves, it's all time Revolution and finance, one of a kind Suits and hoodies, we changing the game Finance revolution, we breaking the chains Old and new, yeah, we one and the same Suits and hoodies, remember the name Remember, remember the name